What's up everyone? So today I have a 10 inch Dragon Touch digital photo frame. We're going to go over its features, its price point, and whether or not it's a good purchase. So let's get into this review and see what it's all about. Okay, so first of all, on the back side, you have this panel here, okay? And it's all magnetic, so it just slides on and clips. There's no uh, ports for a micro SD card. Some of the other versions of the Dragon Touch had at one point um, the micro SD cards or the SD card uh, slots. And uh, this one doesn't seem to have it. I don't know if it's because they updated it or if this is just an additional model. Okay. The only thing you have back here is a power button located in the rear and that's it. Okay. And then your power uh, connection here. And then once that's plugged in, your little logo runs, it says drag and touch. It takes a little bit of time uh, for it to display and it walks you through this whole intro process. Okay. It, the frame is pretty true to color as you, uh, what you see here in the image and it's loading everything up and then this is what you're greeted with. So as we navigate through the actual picture frame, here you have your images that are going to be shown. Uh, you have an alarm clock that you can set. You have all the settings to download uh, or to download the new software or even to uh, connect to Wi-Fi and those abilities. Um, you have the option to run video and then you have your time, date and all that stuff over here. Okay. You also have a weather option here, which I'm not connected to Wi-Fi currently. Uh, but once I do, all that stuff will auto populate as well as uh, the firmware update. Okay, so what this frame offers is a photo sharing uh, option where you could share photos um, basically on your smartphone or your laptop or what have you. Other people could log in and also share photos. Uh, it's a 10 inch display across, it has 16 gigabytes of memory internal, so it doesn't have the external memory. Uh, you can invite your friends also to share, of course. And then also you have a motion detector, which is down at the bottom. So that way it knows when to turn on when someone's around. And then also you have your easy operating button where you select that and it gives you the key features you need up at the top uh, left hand corner. Uh, so you got your back button, your home button, your volume and your power options. Um, so you don't have to reach around to the back all the time to power off. Okay, so to get started, of course, you need to download the Wi-Fi stuff. Uh, if you skip through all that options like I did, you go just go to settings. And then you could go to and then select whichever one you want and then click your Wi-Fi stuff. And then you want to go to about and then check for updates to make sure you're on the latest version. It says I'm on the latest version. And then from there, you have everything, inf all your information here, um, your version, your frame ID, serial number, Wi-Fi address, um, model, build number, internal storage. So how many gigs of storage you have, and then also how much is available. So I have 10 gigs, 10.881 gigs of available storage. And that's because this thing stores uh, stuff on it currently. So, I mean, you're going to have to use uh, some of your 16 gigs. So you're not going to get a true 16 gigs. Okay. So what you want to do is download uh, the R photo app. So that way you can do this wirelessly. Uh, you just make your account. Uh, I already created one. All right. Now what we need to do is go into devices. So that way we can add our device. So we have my device and bounding devices. So you want to go to my device and, um, once you have done that, you want to create a name and create a, um, an email, just a random email, and then type in your frame ID name. And that's going to be under settings and all the way down to the bottom, it'll say about and under about, um, it'll give you on the right hand column, uh, everything about your, uh, picture frame. And then you enter your frame ID and then say bind and then it's successfully bound. Okay. And then it asks you for a confirmation, which you say, okay. So I accept it. 
and you could if you ever wanted to get rid of this stuff you could also do a factory reset um, and do it that way so we have we could go to view so this is directly uh, from whatever you post all right so now what we can do is add um, our images we want on here and then view them uh, based on those account all right so now what I want to do is go to media and then select either video or photo we're gonna go photo and it gives you access to your photos of course I have my car stuff on here and other things um, but I'm gonna select some stock footage okay some randomly stock footage that I downloaded and then say done once I did that it displays on the screen and I could label it, add a caption, whatever I want, I could add to that, okay? I select family, so that way it goes into uh, that area. And then I go to send. And as you can see, it's pretty fast, okay? It says sent successful, and it takes me back to my display. But now over here, my images are displayed, okay? So now I no longer need the app. Okay, so in this picture frame, uh, it displays your images that you upload it. And as you can see, it kind of pans through them. All right. So I select it. Okay. It's telling me everything I have new. Um, I have my email from uh, my YouTube email. I have my name on here of what I downloaded from my app. Right. So everything's connected based on what you input. Um, it shows your internal storage. This is what's shown. You can favorite these. Okay. And then you select it and then it'll run through uh, each one. Now in settings, you could actually change the intervals, how long uh, you want this to display. So if it doesn't detect motion here or sense anything after a few minutes, it'll go away. So it's totally up to you on how um, you want to do it. Okay. Okay, so when dealing with uh, your image here, if for some reason you want to make modifications to it, such as uh, orient it a little bit differently, you tap on the screen. And once you tap on it, you greet it with this uh, icon here, which allows you to flip. So if you decide you want to run this portrait or landscape, you could, so, uh, you could do so as you please. Uh, also, you could expand the image or contract the image depending on what style format you took it in. Uh, you could pause it here if you want to just display it on that single image. Okay, you have a trash can to delete. You have a magnification button to zoom into it. So if it's portrait or landscape, you could do that. Um, you could go to settings and it allows you to do uh, different options here. So you could do slideshow interval, five seconds, uh, the transitioning, so you got to be a little fast on this. Uh, you could do depth, you could zoom out, uh, zoom stacks, zoom center. So it does different uh, rotations as it gets to those images. And then you have this, which gives you information about the image. Okay. And then it displays down here at the bottom um, what image it is in the stack that you have. Okay. So when, when I downloaded this, um, I was able to do nine images at a time uh, for this picture frame to send over uh, Wi-Fi. So if for some reason I'm missing a segment of the image, um, I can modify that by holding it and dragging down like so to kind of center up um, the larger image and uh, get the area that I want it to uh, display. Um, or I could also grab it and kind of move it like so, and it'll go to the previous one, or you could skip ahead by sliding it over. So it takes a lot of motion. You know, it takes almost a full screen for you to actually maneuver from right to left or left to right. Um, but it's not that bad. I mean, it, it allows you to make sure that that's what you want to actually display, or if you want to shift over to the next slide, you could do so. So I like the fact that it's on the fly adjustment and um, it'll just play through like so. Also, you could click that top button and locate it into a different area 
if you so desire, say it's just in your way, uh, you can maneuver it wherever you want. If I had a video playing, I could change the volume here or lower the volume. Um, I could also push back so that way I see what's displayed. I could delete stuff. I could add more. Um, everything's basically there. This icon is not touchable, all right? But these icons are, so you could show all favorites. So if I have a lot of um, images displayed, I could actually favorite them. So then that way I could um, only deal with those that I want, okay? So by clicking this three dot system up here, you could actually delete. So I could select the ones I didn't want. Maybe someone uploaded one that you don't really want. You could select it and delete it, okay? It tells you the number. You could select them all by pushing the circle. So there's a circle here. Select them all and delete them if that's what you so desire. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is record a video. So say I wanted to record this. Okay, and then I want to play through all my images. So that way you could see it real time there. And as it plays through, you can see my phone. All right. I could push stop. I could say use video, retake video, or play it back so I know what it's taking. Uh, it'll show it on there. I could download it to that album, say send. And as you can see, it's going to send pretty fast. Let me go back, get out of here. Um, by s tapping on the screen, it also shows some display uh, components down below. Uh, just remember, I was recording in 4K, uh, so that's probably why it's taking a little bit longer. And plus, it's a video, so uh, sending it through Wi-Fi is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but as you can see, it's not terribly slow. It's buffering a little bit. And we're almost complete. And then boom, it's done. So once it's done, now I could go over here, select uh, where it came from, push play. And now it's going to play that video. Remember, if you're not in landscape mode, it's going to be in portrait mode. Uh, so make sure whatever you record is in landscape. All right. And as you can see, it plays it all the way out. Just like the photo, uh, if I don't want it, I select the video. And then I could delete it and say OK. All right. And then I could go back, go to my images. And then just play the images if I so desire. And then it'll walk me through them once again. So if you want to uh, reset anything uh, back to factory, all you got to do is go down to system options and factory data reset and go to reset device. It deletes all users and restores device to inactive. Um, if you decide you're going to sell it in the future and uh, it starts resetting everything and it's back to the you know original screen so all your photos all your information all that stuff gets deleted and uh, you don't have to worry about it or if you decide you're gonna um, give it away as a gift after you tested it out to see if maybe you wanted to purchase another one um, by erasing that information you could do that and it should show factory settings after that so for the verdict, do I recommend this product? Yes, I do. It has its place in uh, what it offers. So first of all, it's a good gift for a birthday, okay? It's also a good gift for a Valentine's Day gift uh, for that significant other. Uh, it's also a good Mother's Day gift, which Mother's Day is coming up soon. It's a good option. Um, it allows you to collaborate with your family and allow people to upload new photos as they please if you give them the rights to actually do so. So th that alone is pretty neat, especially if you want to see your grandchildren, uh, maybe that day, whatever they were doing, you know, your daughter or your son can upload those images if you're a mother and um, you could see what they're doing for that day, which is pretty neat. 
Um, and then also you don't have to sit there and wait for anything to be printed. Uh, everything's uh, straightforward and right away. Uh, and then you don't have to spend money. Once you purchase this, it's a one-time deal and uh, you could continuously upload pictures or videos. So that's pretty neat. And it also displays time, uh, the day. So you could kind of use it as alarm clock, all that stuff integrated into one thing. Another benefit for this frame in particular is the fact that you actually get a frame that's mapped out around the edges. A lot of the older ones or the cheaper ones actually had a white border like so and then the frame on the outside which took up additional space that was unnecessary uh, to do so. And then the only thing that makes it not look like a picture frame is this little sensor here. Um, but I mean, it's so discreet, you can't even see it. And then also your frame looks like it has a piece of glass there and an image behind it. So the spacing in between the gap is perfect. I mean, it's not too thick or too wide and uh, it's wide enough to make it actually look like a picture frame and not a digital image. So that's going to complete today's video on the Dragon Touch Classic Elite 10 inch digital photo frame. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.